Yo, good afternoon, viewers of YouTube. My name is Tyler of Chico Crypto, and welcome to another episode of Crypto. And I got a water today, sorry. I'm still on my detox. Um, damn good water, Crystal Geyser. I'm sure some of you guys have had this before. Oh, so good, so good. So, in this world, every personal computer or device is connected to the internet through an internet service provider or ISP. ISPs are then connected with each other, thus creating a network of networks. This internet can be visualized as a massive cluster of networks, all coming together to form a single entity. The problem? The global internet infrastructure lacks transparency and is highly fragmented. Due to this, direct data transfers between distant endpoints usually have extremely high latencies as well as slow download and upload speeds. As we can see from this chart of regions across the globe, broadband speed greater than 10 megabytes per second in 2017 only reaches above 64% of the population in North America. The rest of the regions are below 54%, with the Middle East and Africa only having 17% of the population, with speeds greater than 10 megabytes per second. The world isn't built for effective content delivery, but a project that goes by the name of Noya Network is here to save the day. Content delivery networks, along with global broadband with usage, is expected to grow at an astounding rate. There are many sources that forecast that global CDN market alone will grow from $6 billion USD in 2016 to nearly $31 billion USD by 2022. The global web hosting services market is expected to reach $154 billion USD by 2022 at a 16% compounded annual growth rate. There is huge potential for growth in this industry. Although there is massive growth, there are major glaring problems besides slow speeds. Number one is content delivery networks are inherently centralized. Number two is the limited geodispersion reduces the advantages of CDNs in low availability areas. Number three is CDNs have limited incentives to innovate. And number four is scaling bandwidth intensive content worldwide is extremely expensive. And finally, number five is the CDN market is monopolized by Akamai and Amazon. So what is Noya doing about this? The project is applying next generation P2P file sharing protocols, AI, and blockchain technology to combine hundreds of thousands of computers to serve as one single intranet and provides opportunity for every web content provider in the world to deliver their content to global audiences at the quality they choose. So let's now dive into the architecture of the Noia platform. It is formed by combining two separate structural elements. Number one is the content scaling layer, which includes the P2P file sharing protocol, AI and blockchain tech that determines how content is going to be delivered through the network. And number two is the governance layer, which is a set of smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain that define what NOIA tokens are and govern how the tokens are transferred between nodes and users within the ecosystem. So the content scaling layer uses a P2P protocol that includes relevant parts of peer exchange, BitTorrent, distributed hash table, and WebSocket wire protocols. Also within this layer is the artificial intelligence that uses proprietary mathematical algorithms and pattern recognition that handles requests, content caching, um, the fastest route discovery, and network traffic prediction. Within this content scaling layer is the cloud controller, and it is a key element of the layer software stack. It is responsible for instructing masternodes, ooh yeah baby, masternodes, how to best utilize worker nodes for caching and delivering data in the most efficient way. The main responsibilities of the cloud controller are the authorization of masternodes, selection and load balancing of masternodes, content scaling commands to masternodes, and the quality of service control. So to give instructions, the cloud controller requires metrics about past performance of worker nodes. These metrics are propagated through and by the masternodes. Now let's take a look at masternodes. 
They serve as intermediaries and they are responsible for implementation of content scaling commands, request handling and pooling, load balancing of worker nodes, and fastest route discovery. And finally, they submit performance metrics to the cloud controller. Now looking into worker nodes. By installing the CSL worker node client, any person can rent out their unused bandwidth and storage space to the Noia network and act as a point of presence for content delivery. It is a Node.js application and can be run on any Linux, Windows, or Mac OS machine. Worker nodes are responsible for implementation of content scaling commands, downloading and caching the content from the source, sharing the content with other worker nodes in the network, and finally delivering it to the website users. The last component of the content scaling layer is the CSLJS library. This is an open source solution which is needed to be integrated into the hosted website and they need that to use the Noia network. The main functionality is to submit data requests to the master nodes and to receive content from the Noia network. Links to the original source are changed by the content's hash signatures. Thus, a user application when requesting some files is actually sending their hash signature to the CSL master nodes, which in turn respond with an optimal worker node list for downloading the content. So here is an overall flowchart of how the Noia network works. Number one, a user enters the website which supports CSL. The CSLJS library is loaded into the local memory of the consuming application, for example, a browser. Number two, a user sends requests for a certain type of content. The CSLJS library translates the request into a SHA-256 type of hash and passes the request and its hash to the closest master node, which is selected by that cloud controller. Number three, a master node then checks if the requested content can be found in the swarm of worker nodes and responds to the user. If the content is available, it responds with the optimal list of nodes and metadata required for the content delivery and the user starts downloading that data from the worker nodes. If the content is not available, it then responds with an empty list of worker nodes and falls back to the original backend for the content delivery. The benefits of this are massive. Number one, the content scaling layer only stores content for a limited time, and more importantly, the optimal time. Number two, AI and prediction models will predict what content should be cached and how it should be scaled. And number three, the CSL provides unlimited scalability. The service scales and adapts automatically while website operators only pay for successful deliveries. Also, it's suitable to scale and deliver any type of content, dynamic or interactive. This includes high quality images, videos, software, HD live streaming, 4K video, and other sizable data. Customers can also host their content in different backends that Noia supports, such as HTTP protocol, FTP protocol, and IPFS protocol. So this positions Noia directly within the ecosystem of both centralized and decentralized content hosting, and it actually bridges them together. Another great feature of the Noia network is it gives everyone the ability to stream 4K video. Not everyone has the required bandwidth to effectively stream 4K. With Noia and their multiple points of presences, they created a multi-node, low-cost solution to bringing 4K to the masses. If Noia reaches their hard cap, the price per one gigabyte of bandwidth would only be one cent USD. Compared with the cost from centralized providers, they are charging around eight cents USD. That's eight times cheaper. Another great example of the platform is Noia Edge. This is a privacy-focused network attached storage device designed to run Noia Node Client and provide private cloud services to its holders. This allows individuals to enjoy fast remote access, advanced data encryption, multimedia support, file management, and many other services while simultaneously running the Noia Node Client and earning Noia tokens in return for sharing their unused bandwidth and storage capacity. So, this is destined to become a full-scale mass production business venture, which will be launched in about mid-2019. So what about the Noia tokens? How are they used in the ecosystem? Noia tokens are used for value transfer from customer to those nodes. They are the sole currency within the system. 
They are also used for network governance within the governance layer. So smart contracts govern the monetary incentives and they will ensure the participants are inclined to act in the most beneficial way to the network. Masternodes stake Noya tokens and are rewarded with productive work with more Noya tokens. Malicious work will be punished and nodes will not be granted Noya token allocations and their reputation within the system will suffer greatly. Worker nodes are rewarded for storage, utilization, bandwidth utilization, and uptime factor. Smart contracts keep track of all these pertinent variables. Let's now take a look at the Noya token sale. Total supply is 1 billion tokens with 450 million tokens available for the public. All unsold tokens will be burned. The project has a soft cap to 5 million USD and a hard cap of 36 million USD. The exchange rate is 8 cents per token. Accepted payments are only Ethereum. The private presale is being held this month and the public sale begins on May 29th. The distribution is as follows. 45% is for the token sale, 10% is for community including early adopters, partners, and user incentives, 25% is for future financing on a 3 year vesting schedule, and 20% goes to the team. So now let's look at some important members of that team. Niao Xinchen is the architect and blockchain developer. He has worked in the software industry for more than 10 years and five years of experience at Skype where he looked after the peer-to-peer -peer network stack. Virginius is the content delivery architect with 18 years of pro experience in the IT field. 10 years he spent designing solutions for video transcoders and streaming solutions. Justinus is a CSL developer and held CTO positions at multiple IT companies. He is a full stack developer with deep understanding of neural networks and artificial intelligence. Now, taking a look at the most significant advisor for Noya, James D. Robinson, who is actually a great friend with Vitalik Buterin. If you have watched any online video recently, there is a really good chance it was delivered through a content delivery network that was developed by Jim. He is responsible for building a network that currently delivers over 35% of all internet content. Jim actually worked for Noya's largest centralized competitor, Akame, where he was the director of operations. During his time there, he built and developed their worldwide scalable CDN, consisting of 15,000 servers spanning 100 networks and in over 60 countries. Now that he has left Akame, he has joined the Noya network. So how far along is the project? The MVP, including the Node client and CSLJS library, is just around the corner. With a few weeks, it will be released. The alpha version and testnet will be released in quarter three of this year and it will include smart contracts, master nodes, node reputation and rating system, merging request, and a lot, lot more. The beta will be released in quarter two of 2019, which it will include AI, decentralization of master nodes, and a payment gateway for fiat, baby. The next stages of the project will be planned as the project progresses, so they don't want to get too far out. Well, viewers, this looks like a very, very solid project, and people have compared it to Golem, but they are focusing on content delivery, not creating a massive, massive supercomputer like Golem. Um, the focus of this project is very solid, and that's one of the reasons I really like it, as well as their MVP is right around the corner. So I'd recommend checking it out, and I appreciate all you guys' time and watching this episode of Crypto and Water. So take it easy.